Hello and welcome again to Rewind. I'm Elizabeth Piranum. Here on Rewind, we're drawing on a decade of award-winning documentaries and finding out how the story has moved on since. Today, we're revisiting a moving series which followed doctors working against the odds in the South African township of Soweto. Once home to Nelson Mandela, Soweto was at the forefront of the country's anti-apartheid struggle. Back in the 1970s, hundreds died when student protests were put down with tear gas and live ammunition. Yet more than 25 years after the end of apartheid, Soweto remains a dangerous and disadvantaged place. At Chris Honey Baragwanath Hospital, one of the largest in the world, and known locally as Bada, nearly 70% of all admissions are emergencies, many of them gunshot wounds. Bada's ophthalmology department, the St. John Eye Hospital, treats around 50,000 patients every year, many of them victims of domestic violence, bullet wounds and car hijackings. Back in 2009, Al Jazeera aired a series of films on the work of Bada's medical teams. And today, we've chosen to focus on those eye doctors facing a severe workload with insufficient resources. Here is Saving Soweto, Seeing the Light. Soweto is South Africa's most populous township and home to millions of eyes. St. John's Eye Clinic is part of the massive Krishani Baragwanath Hospital, also known as Barra, and is the biggest eye hospital in the Southern Hemisphere. Many of Soweto's poor and indigent utilize the services on offer here. We serve a huge population here of the greater Soweto. It's probably at least two and a half million. We don't know the exact numbers and we're known as the Eye Hospital. We've been here since 1955, and we're part of Barra, and uh, we have a good reputation. We have a lot of social violence, motor vehicle accidents, and you know, then also gunshot injuries that come to us. And our main function was to do cataract surgery here. We are overwhelmed on a daily basis by all the trauma that we get. Dr. Rob Daniel is a few weeks away from completing his five-year residency at St. John's. He will be moving into private practice. This is the screening clinic, the function of which is to filter out who needs to be seen today and really to pick out the most urgent problems and really to treat small problems that can be sorted out in a short period of time. On a typical day, Rob can see between two and three hundred patients. Frustrations, I mean, this is Africa, there's always shortage. Equipment is always a problem. Most of us have our own equipment just to get through. Diabetics, we check the same day. Because if there's any problem, then we want to be able to just pick it up right away. Oh, you've got a date for today. You can go to the main clinic. You've got a file, that's right. Just come, main clinic. Yes. People with trauma, we'll see them the same day. We organize a card for them, and then they're seen in the main clinic down at the bottom. Shift up, sis. Patients are referred from the screening room to the main clinic. They can wait most of the day in the queue. Every day we've got our patients that come and see us here on the what you call the benches. Last time you had this test was in June. Yes. Looks fantastic. Okay. A repeat patient, 43-year-old Paul, is led into the clinic by his friend. Paul's blindness was caused by untreated diabetes. His wife couldn't accompany him, as she is the family's only breadwinner. She supports Paul and their four children. He developed a corneal ulcer in his right eye, so we've been treating that, essentially trying to make him comfortable. It's, it's more for pain, it's like we're not trying to get any visual improvement, because obviously we can't. Um, but unfortunately, he's taken a turn for the worse. Uh, Dory calls Dr. Hemant Khanna, a senior doctor, to get a second opinion on Paul's case. It's a big perk. It's huge. The lens is coming out. It's got contents extruding. I just thought it's a blind eye anyway. So we have to remove it. But now that the eye is open, that eye is going to become very painful. And 
that. And so the best option for you really is to have an operation yes. where we remove the eye. Okay, I understand. Yes. Eye doctors have to have reasonable eyesight. You can't do ophthalmology if you've got poor vision. Because whatever we do, we're using our eyes to see the pathology in the eye to make the diagnosis. We see more and more of diabetes now. It can cause blindness in a variety of ways. Cataracts occur earlier in diabetic patients. They do get damage to their blood vessels. Sometimes they develop new blood vessels which grow at the back of the eye, which bleed, and they can get hemorrhages. That's what Mr. Morabe has had. He's had new blood vessels growing in, abnormal blood vessels which were leaking and bleeding. And that's why he's had a huge bleed, and that bleed created a cloud that he couldn't see through. That's why he had the surgery done yesterday. We have to draw the retinas. So the next time this patient comes, if somebody else sees him, at least he knows what we've seen at the last visit. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you well. We deal with people in terms of their life. Your vision is the most important uh, sense which you have. To not have that is so debilitating. How old are your glasses? Though? It's the old one. How old are they? It's long time. Hmm? Long time. New ones are broken. New ones are broken. Mm. Oh, okay, well, if you go back to your old glasses, obviously they're not going to be set up for the new lens that we put inside your eye. So that could well be the reason why he is not seeing well in the distance. But at least we looked for a reason and we found one. Go, Mama. Rob next sees a 75 year old woman who presents with cataracts. A simple operation will restore her sight, but there is a two year waiting list at St. John's. Cataracts are really related to age. 60% of 60 year olds, 70% of 7 year olds, and so on. I'm a court now operasi. Then is that young man a great gevaar weer. Ooh, you can talk to me so sweet. Come sit there, Gog. Big smiles. Right. Did they put drops in your eyes? Well, there's the, the old saying that the eye is the window to the soul. We doctors and we, we deal with people on a very personal basis, which is, is fundamentally based on trust. The comfort which a patient feels by us caring for them, that's what gives us a lot of our job satisfaction. Right, that's it. Another day in paradise. Yep, back on the bench. For some doctors, it's another day seeing patients on the benches, while for Hemant, it's a pediatric clinic, which brings its own particular challenges. What's wrong? Good for you. Let's see. Kids are kids. They don't like to be touched. So you gotta to try to catch them when they're awake and when they're playful. You want some sweets? Oh. So you just gotta be patient with them. In the very youngest kids, we use things like hundreds and thousands just to get an estimate of what their vision's like. Yeah, there you go. What's that? You see that? Give you some lights. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can see me. 80% of all sensory input comes from your eyes. You know, so the way you view the world, perceive the world, comes from your eyes, basically. Obviously, these are kids that are growing up. Some of them you can do something about. Some of them you can't do anything about, like the developmental problems, you know. When you are walking around the room, as it does, it follows you. The boy probably has a neurological disorder. He will be referred to Barra for further tests. But like now, you know, showing him the small sweets. He doesn't, he can't see that, you know. 
So it looks like you can see large objects, but you can't see the smaller ones, you know? Okay. The eyes are apart and they're bigger than normal. So we think baby's got some sort of a syndrome, you know? Today is Paul's surgery. Dory will be removing his eye and inserting a silicone ball into the empty socket to stop the pain the ulcer in his blind eye is causing him. Doug. Sorry, Paul, and it's going to sting. Sorry. Sorry, this is painful. Because of his blindness, Paul has never seen his young son. I am missing my, 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 my mom, my son. The last one, I don't know. Him. I don't know him. It's about 10 months now. Because I am. I'm, I'm, I'm getting him while, while I'm, I'm, I'm already blind. It's going to be doing what's called an evisceration. Basically, you remove the cornea and then put in a silicone ball to give some volume to the orbit and close it all up. Um, and the eye is blind, so we've opted to, to give him a final solution and do the evisceration. Uh, right now, I'm just cutting away the conjunctiva. Uh, the work we do here and the things we see here, probably the only place in the world you'll ever get this exposed to so many different conditions. And... Right, so that's our silicone ball. We're, we've put the silicone ball in now, and now we're just going to close up. We're going to close the sclera and then the conjunctiva, and then we're done. Everything went well. There were no problems, no complications. We did a successful evisceration. And he should be fine. He probably should, should go home tomorrow. Should. The doctors at St. John's Eye Clinic volunteer their free time to operate on a few of the thousands awaiting cataract surgery. Called the Mercy List, this gives sight back in one eye to those who are completely blind. The Mercy List patients are fortunate to jump the two-year waiting list. Almost finished, just a little bit left. We do all of them under local anesthetic, so none of the patients are going to be really asleep. We inject them with the local anesthetic injection. There we go. <coughs> okay, you'll see that pain is going to start going away now, okay? Slowly, slowly. Okay. This simple procedure will change their lives, restoring their vision and independence in only 20 minutes. Basically, you want to try to do the perfect operation. You've got to try to per perfect each step. Because if you get each step right, it makes the next step easier. Because the cataract is developed in the lens. You know, the lens in your eye is normally clear. And as you get older, it becomes opacified. And that's what's happened here. You know, this is two months, please. We've just removed the, their natural lens, which had a cataract on it. See, the, the artificial lens is going to replace the patient's natural lens. Because if we don't put a lens in, then the patient's going to need very strong glasses to focus properly, you know? And this lens stays in the eye forever. You okay, sir? Operation's finished, eh? You didn't have any pain? No pain, good. It's finished, operation went very nicely, okay. Rob is about to perform his last cataract surgery at St. John's before completing his five-year training at Barra. His last patient is a paraplegic. He's hoping to make her life easier with one less disability. I and I thank you that I learned it. Because it is lekker om net met die een oog te sien. Die een oog het een bykie al moeilik begin te raak, omdat hy die ander oog moet raak. The incidence of cataracts is extremely high, no matter where you go. It's the bread and butter of, of any ophthalmology practice, because it's the most common problem. It's, it's actually the most successful operation 
that we have in modern medicine, that means that the results are good. It's one of the reasons I did ophthalmology, because you win most of the time. No, I, don't, I want the vacuum 200, please. Ophthalmology is, is probably one of the fastest areas of growth in medicine. It's just unbelievable. I mean, a year ago I was telling patients there's nothing I can do for you for this or that condition. And today I can offer them that treatment. It's just, you know, so exciting. Rob's move into private practice will allow him to keep up with the latest technological advances, which Barra cannot always offer him. The doctors have operated on eight merciless patients. Hemant finishes with the last patient of the day. I enjoy working here, I enjoy doing new procedures if I can. What keeps me excited is you give excited back to people, so that's a real big motivation. And the other thing is this is an, also an academic institution, so there's always new things to learn. There's so many things which can cause blindness, you know. But I think in the future we should be able to cure almost all blinding conditions and cure blindness. It's quite a bold statement. Later in the afternoon, Rob gets another perspective of Barra from the air. I'm learning to fly a small aeroplane. Quite challenging to learn. It's very technical. I, I love the technical stuff. Good luck. Copy, good luck. Copy, good luck. Yeah, so we set the trim up because the aircraft needs to fly in its, in its natural position. It really is an amazingly liberating experience. We're going to climb to 6,500 feet now. And then cruise over to, to Baraguana. Do we direct you over Soweto? Oh, well, I have to go over the Great Party. Baraguana, the biggest hospital in the southern hemisphere. Over here. You know, I've been at Baraguana Hospital for five years now. It's just such a, a gold mine of experience. I suppose, you know, life uh, moves on and I'm going into private practice now. But I feel quite confident with the experience I've got at, at Baraguana. This morning, the doctors on call arrive for work to find two trauma cases waiting for them. The patients have been sent to them from the trauma unit. This gentleman tried to hijack him last night and they hit him with a broken bottle in the process. And um, he's trying to have a look at whether the eyes being damaged. With South Africa having one of the highest crime rates in the world, car hijackings are commonplace. Acts of senseless violence often accompany the crimes. They've lacerated his lid. We're just going to have to have a look at some, any of the further damage that's occurred. This is going to be a little bit sore, but I need to have a look at the eye, OK? Yeah. Looks like it's been cut. Yeah, yeah. Do you see anything with this eye? Do you see the light? Do you see the light? Yeah. This eye is badly damaged. Okay. We can't fix that. I don't see anything. No. We're going to have to take it out. You know, we'll put a marble into it, and then we can put the, the glass eye in front of it, but that I won't see again. Andre books the man for surgery and quickly moves on to deal with a case of domestic violence. She says she was, she was punched in the right eye by her husband in the early hours of this morning. She sustained la a laceration to her lid, and then we still need to have a look at the eye just to see whether there's been any damage to the eye as well. I need to have a look. Look down, look down for me, look down. Big up, Anzi. Can you see me? Teti, can you see us? Sister, can you ask her whether she can see nicely with that eye or whether the division is down on that side? Uh, yes. No. Yeah. You can see me? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that, but we just needed to have a look. Okay. Okay. We're going to need to operate this eye of yours. Okay. 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 In South Africa, 
one woman is killed by her partner every six hours, leading to the highest rate of femicide in the world. How's the eyes, sir, this morning? Does it see better? Better. Better. Yeah. Can you look forward to me, please? It's a very nice cataract operation you've got there. No, they only did the right. The right is 6.5, his eye is 6.5. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Morning, morning. Hi. How was your night? That was a bit on for Mark Doctor. Can you sing? Yeah, I'm sing. Yeah, I'm sing. Yeah, I'm good, doctor. The surgery went well. It was, it was a difficult surgery. Her cataract was extremely hard. But ultimately, she'll see very well. At this fight. Hmm? Lay, doctor. Lay? OK, all right. So it's just, uh, Sort of overwhelmed. It's a bit sad to leave, actually. It's quite a special place. That was Saving Soweto, Seeing the Light. Rewind returned recently to Bada to see how much had changed in a decade. Sambonani, Ninjani, Katle. Sawana, Ugo Bani Gamalako, Unemenya Gamingagi, Uslalela, Sala Sulen, Maja Ubego Buso. When we first met Dr. Robert Daniel, he was finishing his five-year residency at St. John's Hospital, Soweto. A decade on, he continues to serve the community. He set up a charity called Banani, which means, let us all see, in South Africa's Zulu language. This is incredible technology. What, what it does is it measures a child's vision from one meter in one second, and it gives us an automated result. From there, we're able to screen our children who have pathology, and we then expose them to a full eye examination and allow them to be treated in, in a first world environment. Because this is so simple and so portable, I mean, we're literally in a, in a toilet here, um, and we can deliver this to everybody. Kathle, upasile, shaya five. With his portable equipment, Dr. Daniel can set up his clinic anywhere, including this toilet in a community centre. He can examine 300 or more children in one session. It was his time at St. John's Hospital in Soweto that inspired him to continue serving the poor, even though he now runs a successful private practice with the latest technology. I think spending four years serving a, 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 a very poor population uh, imprinted the, the experience onto me that although now I, I'm, I serve a privileged group of people, I can't ignore the aspects of life where we don't all have these privileges. Dr. Daniel also treats adults at an eye clinic based in this church. In English we call it a cataract. So the cataract means that the lens inside your eye is cloudy. So we're going to arrange for you to have an operation. Ten years later, the plight of your average person in a poor community in South Africa is no better, perhaps even a little worse than what it was. This is a great motivator for us to keep giving back to these communities and do our little bit to improve their lives. 
Well, that's it from Rewind for this week. Do check out the Rewind page on aljazeera.com for more powerful films from our archives. From me, Elizabeth Piranum, and the Rewind team, thank you for watching and see you next time.